Welcome guys to another episode of the Candy Show. I'm your host Candy. You already know where we're at. We are at the Red Curb Improv Comedy Club tonight. We have a special guest. This episode is sponsored by Comedy Junkies. We have another out of towner here. That's right. Okay. Guys, I want you to welcome my guest, Miss Blair. But I'm going to find out what else she has going on. She's going to introduce herself. You ready, uh, Miss Blair? Yeah, I'm okay, ready. well, tell everyone yeah. where, where are you from and who are you? I, oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I, um, I do stand up comedy in Pittsburgh. I'm also a tap dancer and uh, a nature enthusiast, and I like to travel and, uh, yeah, but tell jokes. What brought you here to Indianapolis, Indiana slash Avon, Indiana? Because this is where the comedy club is. Yeah, I didn't really know where I was. So thank you for that. I'm like, where, <laughs> You're where am I? I'm just driving. You know, I'm not even driving. I didn't even drive here. Oh, wow. uh, I was asked to come do a show because uh, Kevin, who uh, it was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, did a show with me there and he asked me to come. So I said, hell yeah. Nice. Well, welcome. Is this your first time it's being in Indiana time. or just Indianapolis, Indiana? I've driven through it before. Okay. But this is the first time I've stopped and stayed. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you get started? Uh, So I went to school for acting. I was a theater major in uh, college. I went to Ohio University. And then when I graduated, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, but I, so I started writing for a sketch comedy group called four, one, two night that my friends were doing. And, uh, yeah, from there, I just kind of was like taking my ideas, uh, solo and I was thought I'd get my hand at stand up. And then I tried and I got my first laugh and I was hooked ever since. And that's been how long ago? That was about 10 years ago. Okay. All yeah. right. Give me one big lesson that you've learned so far within 10 years about your comedy adventure uh the biggest lesson i learned is that i'm not going to make everyone happy and that was a really tough lesson to learn because in my life i was always trying to please other people and make people happy and i wanted to do that in my comedy and i just i realized that i'm not for everyone and i'm not going to make everyone laugh and it's a bigger challenge as a comic to try to to try to reach that audience how like, long into your career did you realize that uh, did you finally say you know what i can't I, I I think I realized quickly, but I didn't let it sit. I didn't like it didn't hit me until I was like accepted it. You know, I realized early I was like, oh, I'm going to I don't know if I'm going to be for everyone, but I tried to be for everyone. And then I was like, now I kind of like it when don't pe people don't like me. It's kind of fun that way. It also, you know what? Does it help build some more material for your next show? Yeah, it does. It helps try to, you know, you're always learning in this field. You're always learning. You're always growing. So it's like, how can I reach that audience or how do I make this available for them to like relate to? So, yeah, it's always it, you're always growing in this field. And if you're not growing, you ain't doing shows. <laughs> do you ever go back and review yourself and look at uh, any footage that you just might have gotten captured? And I do. Uh, it's, it's never easy. I always, I, you know, it's hard to look back at myself cause I see every flaw and every imperfection and, you know, it's easy to compare yourself to other people out there, but you have to realize that, you know, what you're doing is what you're doing and you have to stay true to yourself. Well, I got a chance to listen and, and check you out on stage <laughs> without giving it too much. There was a couple of things that you asked the audience, uh, did they have or, or, or they familiar with? I don't know if you heard that or not, but I clapped. You mentioned glasses. Glasses? Did you wear glasses before? Oh, braces. Yeah, no, I grew up with red hair, glasses, and yeah. braces. Yeah. So we have something in common. Yeah. I used to wear glasses. I uh, used to be called four eyes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I used to have braces. And this is totally nobody knows. I've never said this on this show. Mm. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I wasn't, um, I, I used to be called no teeth. No teeth. Yes, and Gumby. Oh I man. had braces, and it was just a whole situation. But kids are I, ruthless. I, they are. Kids are ruthless. They are. I I know a little bit about it, so that's the reason why I was like, "God, clap!" Yep, that was me. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> kids are tough. I think that's like you know, you grow a tough skin, especially like when you get made fun of. I think when you're a kid, or you, you know, you either take it too hard, or you learn to like use that 
and so you're make a joke out of it. So exactly. yeah. Now tell me how the red hair has been going for you because I see you have a little bit of red still going on in there. Yeah, I mean, it's my natural popular. color. It's my natural hair color. I hated it for a really long time because like growing up, people used to make fun of me all the time for having red hair. And then I kind of just like leaned into it and I, I've dyed my hair other colors and uh, I, it was straight too. I used to straighten it. So I used a straight, straight red hair. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't see myself as anything other than a redhead now. I really like it. And I just kind of uh, embrace the unique of it well we have to we have to find something in ourselves that while we may not like it you know it actually might become a very good attribute of right yourself. you just gotta accept who you are you know what i mean it's like we always want to be something else or like you know we strive to be other people especially now with social media we see what's out there all the time so i don't know i think it's really important to like embrace who you are and the, the weird that you are and the strange and the unique and just kind of own it it's interesting you mentioned social media mm -hmm. now are you on social media i am okay so i'm sure that you have seen the biggest news in comedy now the What's cat going? williams yes you know what honestly i was just asking someone backstage because i haven't been on social media in a couple of days so i don't so i'm not actually up to date with what's going on i think he called didn't he call somebody out for like stealing jokes well i mean i tell you what that is something that he did do so that's factual information however i can't give it justice you'll have to see it yeah yourself. yeah i have to get i gotta go get up with it so i can yes. be relevant and talk about it with other people part of your your homework yeah that is homework. yeah i'll do it tonight okay with that all being said what did you think of our crowd tonight the crowd was good tonight i thought uh being from out of town and un unfamiliar with the stage, I thought that there was like a there was a little tightness about it in the audience. Uh, I could particularly see one guy in the back uh, with his wife who was just like, I don't think either of them laughed throughout the whole show. And that's what I mean by like, not everyone's going to like you, but I'm trying to like reach this audience. Uh, but overall, they seemed like they were very welcoming and it was it was a nice show. Mm. They looked like they were having fun. Now, like I have to ask everybody else, <laughs> what do you think is your weakness? My weakness? It could be in comedy. It could be anything else, but preferably comedy. Uh, my weakness in comedy, I would have to say is, um, or not a weakness, just something I'm trying to improve upon is, uh, letting go a little bit more i feel like i um really i come from a theater background so like i had to learn the lines and the script and i think uh part of my like one of my funniest things is being in a conversation with someone and being able to riff and come up with jokes that way and i think i need to incorporate that a little bit more on stage just letting go and like being okay with failing mm -hmm. while i'm up there or just like in getting the audience in a little bit more maybe like doing more crowd work or you know like being with them Bring i think them that's back in. yeah i think that's something that i i am working on it sounds like to me, for me, I'm a fundamentals type of person. And so I feel like sometimes being spontaneous and on the fly sometimes doesn't work for me because if it's especially something I need to learn and it's going to be a repetitive process, I want to get the fundamentals down first. So sometimes letting go and being relaxed in the moment is hard for me to do. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's the beauty of it. Like it's hard and you might fail, but you have to accept the failure. Like even on stage as a comic, you know, sometimes I have really great nights or I could go, I could have one show and it'd be amazing and then go to the next room and do the same set and it'd not be good. And it's, you just have to accept your failure in order to appreciate the highs. So even if you are practicing and, you know, the fundamentals, if you're trying to be looser with it, it's, you know, you just kind of have to be okay with not getting it right because well, it's, it's always a learning process you know what i mean that's it do, do you really say it's a failure though because no, you're not going to be able to please everybody and right. your, each joke may not hit on this different cities right so do you really say it's a failure or do you just say hey that's just a different audience and that one just didn't hit with them right yeah it's not a failure it's always a learning experience mm -hmm. you know in life in general in comedy and not in comedy it's like 
every opportunity that you have, even good or bad, is always a learning experience. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what can I do differently or how can I rewrite this joke for a different crowd or You know, that's what I mean. It's a constant. You're constantly growing in this field. You're constantly. And if you're not trying to figure this out, then, you know, your time is limited, I think, because it doesn't mean that you either care or invested about your craft. So I think it's 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 there's a lot of homework in this in this field all day long. And anything else that you're doing, if you want to continue to um, strive in life, you you have to look at what may basically have to regroup. Hey, what is it that I need to change? Absolutely. You know? All right. Let's let's switch. To, we're gonna switch this back up a little bit. Tell me about one person that you looked to as you were growing in your comedy career that you said, you know what, I'm gonna study this person. I, growing up, I really, really loved Chris Farley. And he was like, I know it's so odd, but like, maybe it's not. He's a legend, but I would always like try to mimic his skits. And I loved how physical he was. And he was just this like big, not an idiot, but like just this big comedic relief. And I kind of took on that role in my friend group of being like this big comedic relief for my friends and like kind of loud and a little tomboyish when I was a kid. So Chris Farley was always a huge inspiration for me, but I, I get this question and I find that there are a lot of like, I I spent a lot of time in the local scene in Pittsburgh and I, and I really look up to local comics or people who aren't famous because I think that's where I learn the most because they're also trying to get where I'm going and it's not about I can look at someone famous and say okay they're great they're great but I don't I don't see their process I don't see their work so for me it's always looking at the local scene and like how are those people doing it because that's where I can learn the most I appreciate that process and anything um because listen certain people weren't they weren't stars overnight right I mean everybody came out of the womb and you had to crawl before you were able to walk Absolutely. you know but i know that you have to get out of here you want to enjoy the rest of the show <laughs> let everyone know how they can book you reach you follow you on in your social media pages uh you can book me reach me call me uh i am at blair underscore grills with a z underscore comedy on instagram I actually just started that social media page, so I don't probably don't have that many followers. <laughs> but uh, at Blair Grills Comedy underscore underscore, uh, yeah, on Instagram, that's uh, that's how you can reach me. All right. Well, thank you so much, Blair, for being a guest thank you, on Candy. the Candy Show. Yeah. You're welcome, yeah. guys. You already know the drill. Make sure you are following the official Instagram page that is Candy Talk Show. Also, make sure you're subscribed, subscribe, subscribe to the official YouTube page that is Capital C and the number two of the Ian Candy Productions. Two guys. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Ciao.